four, get my shoes and out the door. Five, I'm alive. Six, seven, eight, feeling great. Now I'm gonna shine, life is good. I'm doing fine, and gonna do it right and do it again, yeah. I look into the sky with all the beautiful color, but there's more than just for me, so gonna share it with another. I got to show, to give, let out. I want to sing and shout, take a look and see a beautiful morning that turns into a beautiful evening, and together make a beautiful life. And if you wanna see, then come along with me. Good to see all of you, and we're so glad that you could join us on this week's Experience Michiana. As you can see, it is a beautiful day. I'm in Middlebury, and we're going to head over to the Mustard Seed Marketplace, which you'll find out more about on next week's show. But today, we're going to head out to Wellfield Botanical Garden. Since it's such a beautiful day, to find out how they're opening up their season, we'll also speak with Tim King, who is the executive director of the LaPorte County Symphony Orchestra, and find out how they're closing their season. But then we're going to go right now to Joyfully Said. It's all about the signs, the home, and the apparel. But Courtney got to visit there, and I got a little jealous, and I thought, well, since she was there while I'm here, I'm gonna go in there too. <laughs> Come on. I'm feeling very joyful today here at Joyfully Said in Middlebury, Indiana. And I have with us today the owners, Chelsea and Wes. Thank you so much for having us. This is such an interesting space here. How long have you guys been in this space? So we moved in here in the fall of 2016. So about four and a half years it's been. Mm -hmm. And you guys have so many different products here, but really the bread and butter is your signs. And that's really what draws people in. How did you start in that business? So kind of a long story. Um, I was a school counselor for eight years, and um, but always have had a love of words. I was a former writing major as well. And um, when I was pregnant with our third baby, uh, Wes, who was a nurse at the time, took a job um, selling medical devices. So he was traveling a lot gone a lot and um, so I decided to stay home after having that third baby uh -huh. and it kind of in that process I just for fun made a sign for my house just for fun then yeah <laughs> just right. for um, sign is how it all starts <laughs> yeah uh, and I love home decor as well like I really had an interest in that as well so uh, made that sign and really fell in love with the power of words and how they impact your attitude and your mood and your the atmosphere in your home and so I loved that, I loved decor, and I loved the idea of being home with our kids instead of sure. having to go to work every day. So I, um, I think I posted one on Facebook and started to have some interest uh, to make some for other people. And then it, it just grew from there. And before I knew it, I'd hired uh, my sister-in-law and a cousin. A family affair. Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> and it began just taking over our house. So. And now you guys make them here locally too. Like in the yeah. building you're actually making them. I know we've heard the saw a little bit here going on too. <laughs> yeah. Wes, why don't you tell us about how yeah. that process works? Yeah, that's correct. So um, like she said, about five years ago we started this and we started um, in our garage, in our home. Um, I had to learn how, I was a nurse, so I had to learn how to use a saw and <laughs> use a nail gun. And uh, we just kind of started in our garage and we started with a, a regular saw and then using a panel saw and now we partnered with another local company here in town, Arbor Industries, and they actually warehouse for us all of our supply and we will send them an order every week of the boards that we need for that week and they will deliver them on a big truck to us every week now and they use a CNC to cut them out so they're all exact. Sure. Um, then from there, um, I or one of our team members will spray or paint the sign, the, the base coat. Um, then from there, it will go to our printer or also there's a few designs we still hand, hand roll and stencil. Um, then from there, it will go into our wood shop right over there and he will frame that for us. And then from there, it will come back out and go through quality control at our shipping department, uh -huh. uh, where they will stain the ends and do any final cleanup and wipe down and then shipped out to the customer or on, hanging on our wall here. It's so amazing to see how far you guys have come in just these past few years, from starting from the one sign yeah. on, on your own wall to sure. really growing this business. And you have retail space here too. And I've seen some signs here that I really love. And yeah, you great. know, come on and walk with me here. This is the one that really caught my eye. 
This is kind of a phrase that me and my husband like to use with each other. Um, it was always you. And I'm sure you guys probably feel that too. Yeah. <laughs> Tell us more about the power of words and how this means to the community when they come in and see these signs. How is that experience? Do you literally watch people draw themselves to a sign and it just calls yeah. out to them? Yeah. Um, it's funny you say that right here because just a few days ago we had somebody reading this sign here that says, I loved you at your darkest. Mm. And literally he started crying. Yeah. So that's kind of an extreme example but we definitely have people coming in and you just watch them taking it all in there's a lot to read but yeah we that's something I love and I'm passionate about is trying to choose phrasing and words that really speak something important to, absolutely. to people absolutely so. and you guys even have a really cool thing called the joy box mm -hmm. tell us more about that so yeah, after we expanded our retail shop here and added home decor items, we started having a lot of interest from our social media following to offer some of that home decor to them. And so instead of listing every single item on our website, we decided to curate a seasonal box of items that is cohesive and we show them how to style it in their home. Um, so we, we call it the joy box. So we. Um, launch three of those each year. Oh, that's so. awesome. I love I love being able to get the box. You do it for me. You tell me what I need to decorate my home with because yeah. I'm not that great with it. But I did see another sign and I know we've been talking about joyful. That's really kind of where everything starts here. And this sign by Mother Teresa is another one that really catches me and I'm sure it probably catches you too. But mm -hmm. let no one ever come to you without leaving better and happier. And I feel like even just coming into this space or when someone gets an item here from, uh, from your store that that's what they feel, right? Right. That's our hope. That was our big, really prayer. Like when we when we expanded our shop, is that when people walk in, they just feel refreshed. That's kind of the word that we've had in our minds of, of what we're going for. And it it has been a blessing to hear how many people truly say that when they walk in. So thank you for yeah. saying that because that's exactly what we're hoping for. And, yeah. and what is the motto for you guys? Mm. Uh, our tagline is inspiring a, a life, life well lived. lived. Yeah. So we. Uh, we try to do that through the space that we provide here and through the products that we ship out. And, yeah. and you have so many different products. I know we, we've talked about the signs, but you also have some other local goods and sure. other goods too. And I love how you've already set this up so I know, okay, I know what to do with my kitchen table here yeah. now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yep. Um, we have some really talented people on our team that help with styling the shop. and But yeah, we do carry some other local handmade items. Union Farm is one of our favorites. So okay. some of the wood crates you see around yeah. are made here in Indiana. Um, um, Antique Candle Co. Candles, our, our candle cabinet is full of theirs. They're in Lafayette. We love them. Um, and so yeah. people can, they can purchase stuff online, but mm -hmm. they can also come into the store too. What are yeah, your guys' right. hours here? Nine to five, okay. Monday through Friday, mm -hmm. and then Saturdays nine to four. Yep. Perfect. And they can always go to your Facebook page and onto your website, which is? joyfullysaid.com. Perfect. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, thank you so much for having You're us welcome. here. I feel very refreshed. I feel very <laughs> joyful. And I'm ready to go pick out a few signs for myself. <laughs> okay. Thank you. As you can see, there's so many beautiful items for your home. And Courtney actually finished shopping already. I'm about to head over there. But I think she's getting ready to meet Dave and take a stroll in Wellfield Botanical Gardens. Dave and I get to experience something we haven't Yay. done before in Michiana, visiting the Wellfield Botanic Gardens here in Elkhart, Indiana, and we're ready to head into the Welcome Cottage. I am so excited for this. I love being outdoors. It's a beautiful day and spring is finally here. It is. Let's get to All it. Right. Hi Let's guys. go. Hi, Hi Nina. Nina. Welcome. <laughs> I'm Nina and I'm the manager here at the Visitor's Cottage. So, um, Everybody, we just opened up for the season again on April 1st. Uh, we are open seven days a week, 10 to 6. Um, we added a couple hours on Sunday morning so people can come and walk a little bit earlier. So, And um, we're just really excited to be open for the season. We've got our first ever traveling exhibit coming this season. Um, it's called Origami in the Gardens. Which is so exciting. Nice. We're so excited for it, to bring this to the community. And there's going to be sculptures excited. around throughout the gardens? There's going to be 21 sculptures out in the gardens, all kind of ah. within each garden and on the paths. And then in here in our visitor's cottage, we're going to have three uh, sculptures that are just going to be tabletop and then on the walls will be the unfolded version of the origami piece 
with all the creases and stuff in it so people can kind of see what it looks ha like. I don't think I could ever do it. the origami myself. <laughs> I can't I can't either. I can't either. So. I'm excited though. All this talk about it, we gotta go inside. I, I can't wait anymore, I Nina. I gotta so, go. All so, right, let's go. Um, when you come, um you'll you'll definitely we require masks in our building. So in our visitors cottage and in our garden restroom building. So um you'll be greeted by one of our friendly staff or volunteers and if you want to come on in. Yeah. And we do have a small gift shop in here. So we are going to have those three sculptures in here. And then we also sell well-filled themed merchandise, tons of books. Um, we've got great jewelry. We're also going to have miniatures of the origami sculptures for sale here in the Oh, great. The so I don't have to fold anything. I right. can just buy it ready right. to go. <laughs> yep. Yep. Perfect. And um, so when you come in, we're still trying to maintain the social distancing. We're doing it here. We've got our masks on. You'll be greeted by our staff. They'll get you checked in, and then you can head on through here to go out in the gardens. And then, of course, once you're out there, if you can remain clear of people, you can take your mask off. Yes. Then. Okay. Yes. Okay. We kind of never say take your mask off, but if you are able to physically distance from people, you're, you can take your mask off when you're outside. Well, Smell the daffodils. Yeah. <laughs> right. Exactly. And the lilacs. Oh, yeah. I'm so excited. <laughs> lilacs are my favorite. Awesome. <laughs> We're gonna have to go check it out. <laughs> Dave and I are super excited mm -hmm. to be here at the Wellfield Botanic Gardens because we've never been here before. Never, and it's so beautiful already. I'm so excited to see what they have here. And I have with us Eric, uh, our executive director here at the Wellfield Botanic Gardens. And there's a really neat feature going on right now. <laughs> yeah, you can see some live construction right here in the Swan Pond behind us. We've actually lowered the water level because we're installing a new 1,300 pound cow bison. Uh, sometimes called a buffalo, okay. uh, and it is going out with its mate on the <laughs> island right out there. So Aww. we had to lower the water down to get that in, but the next time that uh, viewers come out, this will likely be getting refilled and it's going to be gorgeous. I'm not sure why, but I feel like emotionally like satisfied that they're not going to be alone out there, <laughs> even though they're not real. Like what's going on? That's right. The, the cow has, or the uh, bull has been there since 2018. Yeah. It was a gift from one of our very generous donors, Doug Grant, who put the bison out there in memory of his wife, Barbara, who passed away in 2018. And she was a Colorado buffalo. Okay. And that's where the bison and buffalo comes in. And Doug's always been a fan of bison. So we had a 1,500 pound bull bison out there. <laughs> but for the last couple of years, we've been having people ask, it looks a little lonely. Aww. Is it going to have a mate? And so Doug obliged. And again, through his generosity, we're able to put the cow out there this week. And oh, uh, nice. refilling this soon. Something for people to see. And you guys are open now for business. Absolutely. It's really great. And on days like this, you can imagine we're really excited for the spring and summer and fall to come. It is beautiful. Well, as Courtney mentioned, we haven't been here before, so can we go have a look? Absolutely. We can take you around. I'm going to turn you over to a couple of my staff, Josh awesome. and Nina, and they can show you some of the place and we can enjoy the geese too. <laughs> All right. Thanks, Eric. Hopefully they don't enjoy us. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Thank you. 
Josh is with yeah. us now, and he's the horticulture and facilities manager yep, here at correct. the Wellfield. And we're walking through this space here, and of course, this this doesn't seem exactly natural from the ground, but it's, no. it's popping up from there. It, it is. It is springtime, so we've got uh, we're in our annual garden, which is a space that gets uh, two different displays each year. Okay. Uh, right now, our spring display, of course, is in here with tulips and other things. And what we're doing our theme for the whole year is peace and with each of our seasonal shows we have four a year for with each season uh, with spring splendor show where we've got these cranes these paper cranes here that are rep we've got a, a representative of a, of a thousand and there's a story behind that um, okay in in japanese culture uh traditionally um a, a, a crane represented longevity mm. and they could live a thousand years and if you made a crane for every year that they lived and made a, your wish could would come true okay and so there was a little girl a, a survivor of uh the atomic bomb attacks at age 12 she came down with uh, i think it was leukemia and she started making cranes out of anything when she was in the mm. hospital and fortunately her wish didn't come true but she's kind of become an international symbol for peace, um, and so we're we're honoring that with these cranes here. And and that's kind of a project that you guys are going to be putting right. out here very shortly. It'll, it'll last all summer long. Yeah, this this part the the cranes will show up again in the in for our winter display. But we'll also and we also have these pinwheel patterns with the tulips, which goes along with our, our partnership with Caps uh, and domestic violence. So. We're, we're trying to partner with the community and, and those t and, and those kind of bringing that message in. Um, this will all get cleared out. Okay. And then in the uh, we'll put in our summer display, which will kind of have also a Japanese-y Zen fe you know, theme to it. It is. It's very peaceful yeah. here. Yeah. I, I know we can still hear some of the movement going That's right. on, We've getting got things ready for the construction going on and, and that kind of thing. But there's lots of gardens still for yep. people to check out now. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, there's a lot of, right now is a good time to come. Our spring garden is in, coming into full bloom, or at least starting to. And there's a lot of bulbs and trees and all kinds of stuff going along with our woodland. And so there's just a lot of stuff that's coming online and starting to bloom. It's worth coming to take a look. Perfect. Let's uh, maybe send Dave over yeah. to check it out. All right. Ah, oh, it is so beautiful Isn't here it? in the gardens. It's, I mean, I couldn't ask for a better place. The daffodils here. Uh, for someone like me who's never been here before today, yeah. and I feel bad that I haven't because it's so beautiful. You should feel bad. I, I mean, I feel terrible yeah. to my no, core, no, Josh. Good. Thank that's you for good. rubbing it in. You're, you're welcome. Um, how much is there here to see? Like, how many yeah. different gardens are there? Because I feel like I haven't even uh, kind of well, got my so, feet wet. So the, origi the, the total acre is 36 acres. Oh, and wow. uh, the original full master plan, you know, will have that completely filled out. About half of that's water. So uh, there's about 15, 20 acres that are finished mm -hmm. uh, with gardens like the annual garden you just saw. Mm -hmm. we're, we're in the conversation garden, the spring garden, the woodland garden. We have an English cottage garden, a children's garden, and then the newest garden, of course, is our, our, our granddaddy, the island, the Japanese garden, the mm -hmm. island garden. So, and they're all got something unique and, and, and interesting and different to, to check out. Now, you love this place. I can yep. tell your passion for this place. If you had one hidden gem, if you could only see one Ooh. part of this garden, where would you go? Um, you know, uh, I'm not going to say one because I can't. Um, I'm going to say two. This time of year, what, what often gets missed and really is, is very quick, to, it's, here, it's ephemeral, real, literally, is the woodland garden, mm -hmm. our, uh, our conservation garden. There's a lot of spring native uh, plant material that's in nice. there that are you know that are blooming and the the japanese garden is just a, a really neat um four season garden yeah. things are really going to start blooming with our azaleas and other things so there it's worth coming and checking out i like it well i think courtney's over on the island with the bison so she we probably, should probably yes. go over and get her she's probably scratching and giving them a pet that's exactly what she's doing. Yeah, sure. <laughs> well, it may not be June yet, but as you can see, there's lots of things bursting out all over at Wellfield Botanical Gardens. It is such a perfect time to get out there, enjoy the scenery, and enjoy the weather. And for those of you that are ready to enjoy some beautiful music as well, let's catch up with Tim King. Thank you so much for joining us and a big congratulations because you are coming to the end of your 48th season of the LaPorte County Symphony Orchestra. And I must say it's probably been quite the season. If you had here before, you'd probably still look <laughs> after this season, you'd look the same way right now. 
I don't know. I think I'm about 10 years older, but we'll see. <laughs> but, you know, we've, we've learned a lot this season. Um, uh, we've learned how to live stream. We've learned how to play distant from each other. Uh, the orchestra has just been so wonderful about all the changes because I think they, they want to play. You know, they, they, they just want to play together. And so many orchestras are not playing right now. Now, a few of them are starting to come back, which is really, really nice to see. Um, but we just kind of forged right on ahead and, and sometimes had small audiences and sometimes just had the live stream itself. Um, so yes, we are coming to the end of our 48th. In fact, we're already starting a 50th anniversary committee to start with the, cause you know, we're gonna need that time uh, before the 50th starts. So this concert that's coming up is April the 17th, mm -hmm. day, 7 p.m. at the Civic Auditorium, which is in Laporte. And we're welcoming back a Laporte native and his name is Gary Wado. It's W-E-D-O-W, but it's pronounced Wado. Gary's a Laporte, um, uh, a graduate of Laporte High School, went to Indiana University, and then has gone on to have this incredible career as a conductor of both opera companies and orchestras all around the country. He's been a faculty member uh, at the Juilliard School of Music in New York City since 1994, mm -hmm. so an educator at the same time. Um, he's never been back to conduct this orchestra. Now, that is, that's a real problem on our part for never inviting him back. And our interim music director, Chuck Steck, said to me sometime last year, he said, you know, there's this one guy that I've been wanting to bring back for years and years and years, and for some reason we can't seem to, can we please get Gary Wado? And I had heard of him in my world, uh, but had never worked with him. Uh, all you need to do, Kelly, is Google Gary Wado, and it just everything comes popping up. You know, it's an, it's yeah. an amazing bio and resume. So mm -hmm. coming in, He's so excited to be conducting the LaPorte County Symphony Orchestra. And he, and he just- Anybody would be, Tim. <laughs> well, when you conduct the New York Philharmonic and the Seattle Symphony and the Boston Lyric Opera and that sort of thing, okay, oh, but, but he is, he, he's really excited to come back. And he's put together a really nice program. And it's, it's mostly a classical program, but it, but it was almost like a light classical program with a pop ending to it, musical mm -hmm. theater ending. He's doing some Mozart, some Handel, uh, some stuff from the opera Lucia de la Mamour. He's doing Aaron Copeland, American songs. And then we're doing, we're ending this, uh, the concert with this beautiful duet called Wheels of a Dream from Ragtime. Oh, that is one of my favorite great, musicals. Oh, and I mean, I got goosebumps just thinking about it. It's such a good closer. And he's always been one of these people that champions the young artist. And so he's bringing two young singers with him. The soprano's name is Kelly Motter, M-O-T-T-E-R, and the tenor's name is Edward Graves. You can find all of this information on our website, which is lcso.net. You can look at the program that Gary's doing, the bios and all these uh, young artists and Gary as well. And so you can get tickets by going to our website, lcso.net, or we have a wonderful music shop here in LaPorte called Roxy Music for those people that want to pick up tickets there. Now, do you still have to sell less tickets or, you know, what, what kind of is happening now? Because I know a lot of people are starting to get the vaccine now, right. but do you still have to kind of keep that social distancing going for now? We do, uh, not as much as we had to for the, the concert that we just had two weeks ago, because that con it just, Indiana turned blue, like, two days before we had the concert. Well, that didn't really give us enough time to get the word out. So we are gonna be able to have more table seats on the floor. We are gonna be able to sell more seats in the balcony. So it looks like we can accommodate, the last concert we can only accommodate about 300 people. Uh, this concert looks like we can accommodate more like six or 700 people. That's so great. That, that will be nice to see more, more of a house in there. And we're hoping to have six or 700 people for, for the concert. So I know this is the end of the 48th season. When does the 49th start and what is that going to look like? Well, we're going to have a new music director by that time. And in fact, we're, um, we're thinking about who the new one's going to be right now. So that choice is going to be made here very, very soon. Um, and though we'll open with the 49th. And right now, I can't even tell you what it's going to look like because the new music director obviously will have a, a big say in what the music's going to be and how he or she wants to wants to do the programs. But we, we typically have Hoosier Star opens in September, and then we do education concerts in October, and we actually open the season in November. So that will be the big opening in November of 21 with the new music director. Speaking of who's your stars, I heard you had the auditions already. How did we they did. go? Well, you know, the good thing about this one is that we had to 
we'd had we had to postpone the auditions last year because they were supposed to be in March and that's when everything fell apart. And so we postponed them to July. So we had everybody do the social distance and the mask and all that. You know, we had a, a you come in one way and you go out the other way. And, and so we already had that situation adopted this time. We had uh, 60 people audition for Who's Your Star from 21 different communities in Indiana and in Southwest Michigan, as far away as Terre Haute, which, you know, is on the complete opposite end of Indiana and New Indiana, which is right across from Louisville. So that's about five hours from here. Uh, we did pick 10 uh, finalists, five uh, youth, 17 and under, and five adult, 18 and over. And we're very excited um, to, to have them with us. They're also on our website. There's a Hoosier Star tab, and you can take a look at who the finalists are. We have our first rehearsal with them April the 10th, so just a couple of weeks from now, where we're going to work with them and choose their solos um, and get the orchestrations done for, for the concert at the second weekend of September. Well, we can't wait for that. That is always a highlight here in our community. And thank Tim, you. thank you so much for being with us. I know you had mentioned earlier about the wonderful musicians. I'm sure you're so appreciative of the resiliency of the musicians and the support of the community yes. through this 48th season. You know, a lot, a lot of people, I keep getting the question, how are you doing? How are you doing? Because they know that we're doing concerts, but they really don't know how we're doing. And so we're doing fine. As I want people to know that we have... We have come through this really well. Uh, I really feel like uh, even though the musicians have had to space and be farther apart, they're actually closer together as a group. Mm -hmm. They've done all this together and they have, uh, my respect for them is just off the charts. They, they have, uh, we have had no complaints. Uh, Chuck Steck has been amazing uh, leading the group. Our, our music director candidates have come in and have just gone with the flow. It's really been, a, a it's, when I, when I look back on this 10 years from now, or, or when I'm too old to even go to concerts or whatever, you know, I will look back, this is probably a highlight of my career, honestly, that we were able to overcome this as a group and, and still be able to bring music to the public. Right. And you know what, that speaks volumes about the community that we all live in. So, so yeah. glad that we are a part of it. And Tim, I don't think you'll ever be too old to go to concerts. So I don't believe that at all. But again, congratulations to you. And we'll, we'll talk to you soon. I would love that. Thank you so much. wonderful catching up with Tim King and it's so great to see how the community has truly supported the LaPorte County Symphony Orchestra during such a challenging time. But times are changing. Hey, we just finished winter. We're in spring and it is such a beautiful time in the Michiana community. Let us know what you're doing this spring. Where are you going? What things are you going to experience? Let us know. Hit us up on Facebook. But remember to join us next week because we're headed to the Mustard Seed Marketplace and you guys are going to love it. This WNIT local production has been made possible in part by viewers like you. Thank you.